Hi guys, it is just a gray, gloomy, yuck, mid-January winter day here, and that would be Tuesday, January 12th, 2021, here in this undisclosed swamp here uh, on the planet. I am Sam Mitchell, and this is Collapse Chronicles, and I, I am just absolutely flabbergasted today, guys. Between the distraction to the distraction and the distraction itself, we actually have the mainstream media coming out with several uh, stories about the collapse of a planet today. I cannot believe it. This is probably more stories today in the mainstream media than I've seen in a long time about... Uh, well, maybe this first one is part of the distraction to the distraction. But anyway, you know, yesterday I was talking about all of those um, blankety blanks over there at the cove in Japan. Well, the second biggest story on planet Earth today, according to Yahoo News, this is USA Today's version of this story, the number two story on the planet. <clears throat> U.S., from right here, uh, you do not need to go to the cove in Japan. You need to go to about 20 miles from where I am sitting. About 20 miles from where I am sitting, uh, we have our own uh, version of the cove right here in uh, good old Florida. <clears throat> U.S. Fish and Wildlife opens investigation after Florida manatee found defaced with the word Trump scratched into its back. Uh, the, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is investigating the harassment of a manatee discovered with the word Trump uh, etched into its back. Uh, Haley Warrington found the manatee swimming on Sunday in the Blue Hole headwaters of North Florida the defacement quote is just disturbing, 100% disturbing. Manatees are not billboards, and people should not be messing with these sensitive and imperiled animals for any reason. Calling it political graffiti. Now, of course, what is nowhere mentioned in this story, but at least they do have a link to it, as uh, the defacement by a Trump tard of one manatee is the second biggest story nowhere will you find on the mainstream media unless you really dig that over 600 manatees died in Florida last year, the vast majority caused by uh, collisions with boats. You know, all of the, these red tides and green tides and all sorts of algae and stuff killing them, habitat destruction, all the usual <clears throat> suspects, the 600 manatees that died apparently without the word Trump being etched into their backs, barely getting a mention. Okay, I'm just going to go down the list uh, for the knee slapper of the uh, day, uh, 50 countries vow to protect 30% of land and sea by 2030. Yes, at least 50 countries committed to protecting 30% of the planet including land and sea, over the next decade to halt species extinction and address climate change issues. Yes, during a global summit Monday aimed at protecting the world's biodiversity. The, the term global summit now uh, translates to 30... 30 liters, I don't know why they say 50, and then it says 30 liters having a Zoom call for a couple of hours. Yes. Uh, 
There you go. But I, uh, 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 of course, guys, you know, the, the myriad of knee slappers in this. So if, if 50 countries vowed to protect, what are there, 193 countries on this planet? This is another way of saying 143 countries on the planet made no vow whatsoever to protect 0% of their land uh, and see by 2030. That's another way of reading this. And, uh, of course, uh, they're never going to do it. And even if they did, you know what the definition of creating a protected area is, is looking on a map and drawing an arbitrary line around a hunk of wherever uh, and painting it light green and calling it a protected area. Yes, much like that protected area of Virunga National Park where six uh, more rangers were, you know, protecting those gorillas were gunned down in cold blood. Uh, that was a an easy uh, prediction to make for 2021 about environmental protectors being murdered in the year uh, 2021 if anybody does try to protect anything. But I actually, uh, I I'm going to hand the comments over to Greta Thunberg. Greta Thunberg, uh, what does Greta Thunberg have to say? I know I, oh no, did I not get uh, Greta's uh, comments? Uh, damn it. My, oh, here we go. Okay, this is from Greta Thunberg weighing in on the One Planet Summit. The One Planet Summit, her, the now 18-year-old Greta Thunberg, summing up what happened during this Zoom call yesterday. <clears throat> blah, blah, nature. Blah, blah, important. Blah, blah, ambitious. Blah, blah, green investments. Blah, blah, great opportunity. Blah, blah, green growth, blah, blah, net zero, blah, blah, step up our game. Don't forget, blah, blah, hope. And finally, blah, 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 asterisk, the asterisk being blah, 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 locking in decades of further destruction. That is exactly, thank you, Greta Thunberg. Blah, 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 locking in decades of further destruction is exactly summing up the one planet Zoom call where one fourth of the planet called in, obviously the US, Russia, and it goes without saying Brazil were not, uh, did not have anything to do uh, with making any pledge to uh, protect one acre of uh, anything. So what I was going to do today, if you recall, I was going to actually share some good news uh, about that joke, uh, oil and gas lease sale they just had up there in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, you know, where uh, Donald Trump uh, was declaring one of his last wars uh, against the planet by selling off the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge to the oil and gas companies and how virtually nobody showed up. It was an absolute flop. Uh, hallelujah. So uh, a complete total face plant for Donald Trump. Uh, so I was actually going to make a, a, um, a good news, but I am, 
I, I actually literally, I mean, no joking aside, want to send out kudos to good old Associated Press for uh, coming up with this long, involved story talking about a reality check on uh, if anybody is uh, reading what happened in Anwar or whatever they've been hearing earlier this year that uh, oil and gas companies were no longer buying up lease sales in, you know, in our public lands. This is a very, uh, I admit this one took me a little bit by surprise. Uh, take it away, AP oil companies lock in drilling. Yes. Um, in the closing months of the Trump administration, energy companies stockpiled enough drilling permits for western public lands to keep pumping oil for years and undercut President-elect Joe Biden's plans to curb new drilling because of climate change, according to public records and industry analysts. An Associated Press analysis of government data shows the permit stockpiling has centered on oil-rich federal lands in New Mexico and Wyoming especially. <clears throat> it accelerated this fall. Uh, anybody thinking that uh, the oil companies were walking away uh, from these lease sales, these lease sales accelerated this fall as Biden was cementing his lead over Trump uh, and peaked in December aided by speedier permitting approvals since Trump took office. The goal for companies is to lock in drilling rights on oil and gas leases on vast public lands where they make royalty payments on any resources extracted. Uh, and so, you know, so Biden is is making all of these campaign promises to the greenies or threats to the oil companies that he is going to lock up the federal uh, our federal lands to oil and gas drilling. So what happened is they rushed in uh, in the final three months uh, of 2020 and to to buy up enough leases, you know, to block. Uh, you're following me, what the game plan is. Uh, Trump officials approved almost 1,400 oil and gas drilling applications uh, during the last three months, which included the election uh, amidst the corona panic. Uh, anybody thinking, and the administration issued more than 4,700 drilling permits in all in, uh, in 2020. And then they have this, uh, this interesting thing. And, and, and this is what, uh, what I think a lot of this has to do with what went on. It says that about the only thing that, uh, that Biden could do if, he, if, if, these, if these oil drillers want to go in there uh, is buy back the leases uh that these p that these uh, planet eaters got for pennies on the dollar is that the taxpayers can go buy back the leases is the only way to totally stop them uh, from doing this and this does have historical precedent where oil companies uh, and, and have sold their leases back to, the very 
uh, U.S. government that sold them the leases for, you know, for a hundred times, whatever. You follow me, what, what the game plan here is. So, uh, my guess is that a lot of these, that was the intention, is just to flip the oil leases back to the very seller of the leases. Uh, anyway, guys, anybody who does not understand uh, how the game is played uh, in this country and on this planet, you know, the more, the, 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 the deeper you dig into this onion, uh, okay, what's the news out of the Arctic uh, <clears throat> this week? <clears throat> Arctic shows where climate change is headed Say experts. This is Ann Dan Polar Explorer Ann Daniels. It, meaning the Arctic, is an indication of what is going to happen to the rest of the world. It is climate change throughout <clears throat> our globe, and we are all connected. Yes. Uh... We have to understand that everything is connected and that we cannot solve the problems addressing one issue alone, and the climate crisis is a symptom, not the cause. Thank you for describing that. Uh... We see it. We see floods. We see the different weather patterns. It's climate change throughout our globe. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I think we're getting ready to have another one of those polar vortex splits. Looks like uh, back below freezing here in the Sunshine State in a couple of nights. I guess there is... Uh, snow uh, heading to Austin, Texas right now, uh, going back down to freezing uh, all over Florida again uh, as the polar vortex is getting ready to split because of uh, all, all of this crap. Okay, now this next article, <clears throat> this is a book-length article from the conversation uh, which I need to spend more time on uh, maybe we can get these fellows on the show to uh, talk uh, some more about this <clears throat> two-thirds of Earth's land is now on pace to lose water as the climate warms that is a problem for people, crops, and forests. Yes, uh, there are growing concerns that many regions of the world will face water crises in the coming decades as rising temperatures exacerbate drought conditions. Uh, so... This is uh, dissecting this new study uh, from these hydrologists. The takeaway from this, <clears throat> we found that the sum of this terrestrial water storage is on pace to decline across two-thirds of the land on the planet. The worst impacts will be in areas of the southern hemisphere where water scarcity is already threatening food security and leading to human migration and conflict. Globally, 1 in 12 people could face extreme drought related to water storage every year by the end of this century compared to an average of about 1 in 33 people at the end of the 20th century. Uh, these findings 
have implications for water availability, not only for humans, but also for trees, plants, and don't forget the sustainability of agriculture. Uh, the declines we found in land water storage are especially alarming in the Amazon River Basin, Australia, Southern Africa, the Mediterranean, and parts of the U.S. In these regions, precipitation is expected to decline sharply with climate change and rising temperatures will increase evaporation. Our findings <clears throat> for the Amazon Basin add to the long-standing debate, which is becoming less and less of a debate with each passing year, uh, over the fate of the rainforest in a warmer world, many studies using climate model projections have warned of widespread forest die-off in the Amazon rainforest in the future as less rainfall and warmer temperatures lead to higher heat and moisture stress combined with forest fires and uh, also combined uh, w with all of w with chainsaws and bulldozers and uh, highways and railroads and hydroelectric dams uh, you know th this is just the latest evidence the the Amazon r rainforest you know more and more people uh, hopping on the bandwagon that if it hasn't already tipped uh, it's, uh, you know, it's teetering uh, on the brink. There is no way at this point to save the Amazon rainforest. The Amazon rainforest is toast, just like uh, the Arctic. Kiss goodbye, the single most biologically diverse uh, Garden of Eden left on planet Earth, the, uh, you know, if, if Hyatt or Bozo Nero and his henchmen don't uh, take it down with the bulldozers and the chainsaws, the dark horse of climate change will clean up, will finish off whatever uh, those pesky little humans are, do not get accomplished in the next few years. And uh, so anyway, this article goes on and on uh, about how just the entire hydrological cycle of planet Earth is completely off kilter. Completely off kilter. And uh, anyway, that is fodder, hopefully for a future interview. And so what is going on uh, with the world's insects in the opening bell of 2021? Uh, as if we haven't heard enough of this, this is just a, an update from good old Associated Press again. Scientists decry death by 1,000 cuts for world's insects. The world's vital insect kingdom is undergoing, quote, death by a thousand cuts, close quote, the world's top bug experts said. Climate change, insecticides, herbicides, light pollution, invasive species, and changes in agriculture and land use are causing Earth to lose probably between 1 and 2 percent of its insects each year, said University of Connecticut entomologist David Wagner, lead author in the special package of 12 studies and the Proceedings of the National Academies of Science, written by 56 scientists from around the globe. The problem, 
sometimes called the insect apocalypse, is like a jigsaw puzzle, and scientists say they still don't have all the pieces, so they have trouble grasping its enormity and complexity and getting the world to notice and to do something. Yes. Uh, Wagner said scientists need to figure out if the rate of the insect loss is bigger than with other species. Quote, there is some reason to worry more, you know, about insects because they are the target of attack, close quote, with insecticides, herbicides, and light pollution. Uh, yep, uh, making matters worse is, is that in many cases people hate bugs even though they pollinate the world's foods, are crucial to the food chain and get rid of waste. Yep, said Wagner, insects are absolutely the fabric by which Mother Nature and the Tree of Life are built. Uh, and then they look at the two most well-known cases of collapse of the insects, honeybees and monarch butterflies. Uh, speaking of uh, particularly the monarch, uh, although you can throw in uh, how many others, quoting this Wagner fellow who we need to get on the show, quote, we are creating a giant biological desert, except for soybeans and corn, in a giant area of the U.S. Midwest, close quote. He said, well, a, a giant area of the U.S. Midwest, a giant area of uh, South America, a giant area of uh, Africa, a uh, giant area of Asia, although I guess most of that is palm oil. Uh, we are creating one giant biological desert here on planet Earth as we have our one planet summit, blah, 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 locked in decades of more destruction. That is exactly what we are looking at. And uh, anyway, I guess even though it's not the prettiest day here, the collapse of global industrial civilization, the little dog and I are going to go for a walk in the woods while we still can. And uh, I encourage you to do the same. Now, back to the distraction. Bye, guys.